the last of the buttock muscles, which is the piriformis. So, just to give an idea of anatomy, I'm going to follow the iliac crest around, like that, then the sacrum, which carries on down here, like that. Now, the other very important and anatomical um, landmark is the greater trochanter of the, of the um, femur, which is here. So, you have the iliac crest, sacrum, and the uh, greater trochanter, which you can feel. And from here to here is where the piriformis arises. There to there. And it actually attaches to the anterior aspect of the, of the sacrum. It then runs across the buttock and attaches into the top of the, the tuberosity. So it runs like this and it is deep. It's a deep muscle. So the gluteus maximus overlies this muscle and runs down. The piriformis is incredibly important because there's one other anatomical structure which you cannot feel, which is the greater sciatic notch, which runs here and there. So what happens is this muscle runs across the sciatic notch, firstly deep and then comes through it and then attaches into the top of the tuberosity. So, the muscle itself has, uh, its functions are very complex because if the leg is straight like this, the way this attaches, what it'll do is it will help to flex the, the, the leg, but it's a weak flexor, and its attachment, it actually wraps around slightly and it will externally rotate the, the leg. If you have your leg bent, so now it's pulling in a different direction because now the leg is bent this way, as it contracts it will actually abduct your leg. So, and then as you're going in between there, it will do a mixture of those movements. So that makes it a very, very complex uh, muscle. Its primary function is as a rotator of the hip. The real key with this is that the, the piriformis has a very close anatomical relationship with the sciatic nerve, which usually comes out about here. The sciatic nerve runs out there and it comes from below the piriformis, but it has a variable relationship and there are rare occurrences where it divides, half of it comes through here and there's even more rare where it comes from above. Then you can see that if the muscle were to contract, it could impinge on the sciatic nerve in these distributions. And this is why the muscle itself gets trigger points. The trigger points have a local pain relationship, but if it impinges on the sciatic nerve, then it will create true nerve-related pain, neuropathic pain, and you will get a pain that shoots, that runs in the distribution of the nerve that it is um, uh, pressing on, and has associated numbness and tingling.